those, um, you know, those guys. I'm sure that once the interviews are done, then we of course will have a call meeting and they will publish the information that they gathered from the interviews themselves. So um, anytime that you want to take a look at that, that'd be awesome. And of course, continue praying. This is a pretty difficult time to be calling a pastor, um, but it's also a really difficult time for the pastors to receive a call and for those church, other churches to be without a pastor. Not that it's not difficult any other time, but um, I think especially now. So it's really important that you continue to pray that God's will be done, that he leads us in the right direction, that he leads the pastor in the right direction, um, that everybody just listen to him and not everything else that's happening. Um, it's kind of difficult to do, so. Um, we're going to open with our first song, Lord, I Need You. <clears throat>
For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call in our name, servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Who, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
Your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world, and at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday of the Pentecost is from Zechariah chapter 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your King is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The epistle is from Romans chapter 7. We know that the law is spiritual. But I am of the flesh, soul, under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may be uh, that you may abound in hope. is in days like these. If you paid any attention to the news these last couple of days with the holiday weekend that we're experiencing, one of the headlines said that 10,000 or so people moved up from other places to the Traverse City area this past weekend, bringing with them all sorts of COVID-19 infections. A little unrest, a little weariness, a little fear out there that you might be exposed. More exposures are prevalent. The ticker keeps on rising. Those infected, those who've died. It's a wearisome world. Fortunately for us, Jesus invites those who are weary, those who are heavy burdened, those who find themselves in the throes and the travels of life, to come to him. This is a gracious invitation. It's also an acknowledgement that life is wearisome. It is disappointing. It is filled with sorrows. And life is hard. There are no shortcuts cuts to happiness. There is no secret path to easy street. There is no way that you and I can avoid the sharp edges of life. But we forget, often, in the midst of the throes and the wearisome of this age, we forget that we have Jesus. And he always invites, come to me when you're weary and burdened. And anyone and everyone who needs finds in Jesus relief and burden from sin, an end to the threats of death, and finds in Jesus the peace that does not evaporate when life goes bad. He is the only rescue and refuge we ever need. And spirit-given faith, born in your baptism, gives you the eyes and the ears to see and hear this. Let me, let me tell you a little secret. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your background or your heritage is. Everyone, everyone has a hard life. It may be different for you than it is for others, but no one is immune to life's struggles. Everyone has the scars from the battle of life. Everyone has bled from the wounds that has been inflicted in life. Everyone feels the hurts of life. Everyone has regrets. Everyone has doubts. Everyone has tears that refuse to dry up. Everyone aches with the pains of life and its disappointments. And everybody, everybody, no matter who, no matter how, everybody comes to Jesus and they are broken, shamed by sin, and marked for death. No one escapes that. How great it is that Jesus comes to us and says, come to me. Come to me and I will give you rest. 
Give up the false dream of a secret path to a successful life and let go of the illusion that if you just try hard enough or better yourself some way, you will find a way out from the struggles of life. But God's grace has come. And Jesus has found the way out for you. He suffered in his own flesh to redeem you, and he bore the pain of your sin and death that he might save you. And he has come for something better, something far better than an easier tomorrow. He has come to guarantee and to give you the promise of an eternity. And once you have that eternity that he has secured for you, then, then you and I are finally free to live free today. But there is no free today without the eternity that comes with Christ. And he has not come simply to give you rest from the struggles and relief from pain and repayment for your losses. He has come to give you something that you cannot earn or merit yourself. He's come to give you rest from your sin by way of the forgiveness that he showers upon you when he makes you his own. The gift of a clear conscience that comes with that baptismal grace, assuring you that you are God's own child, redeemed, washed in his blood, clothed in his righteousness alone, that you might be faultless to stand before his throne. Let's be real. People do not seek to end their lives because they didn't get the right present or the promotion at work or the guy or the girl they dreamed of. People are driven to despair because they live in the chains of sin and cannot free themselves. People are driven to choose death because their consciences, shame and regret make it impossible to live and they have no hope left which is precisely why Christ has come and why he invites us in the midst of the throes of the weariness and burdens of life to come to him, to look up and to come to him, to hear his call. And the greatest possession of all is that clear conscience absolved by the voice of the Savior and the forgiveness and mercy that overflows in our lives that we might show that same forgiveness, love, and mercy that Christ has shown us to those around us. We were created to know a real Sabbath rest from life. Not only when work ends, but when the grip of life is released from us. Sin stole that from us, that rest from us. Sin makes it hard for us to let go of our worries or to find relief and release from our fears and an end to our anxieties. The good news is that what sin has stolen, what the old evil foe has enticed away from us, our Lord Jesus has come to restore. That rest, rest born of a true and lasting peace, comes in the shed blood of Jesus for you. We belong to him, and we cannot be separated from the power of his love. He holds us in his nail-pierced hands and he assures us that no one, no one can snatch us out of his hands. This is the Sabbath rest that was lost in Eden and is tasted anew in the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation that satisfies not only our wants but our desires fully and finally. And the last enemy, of course, to be defeated is death, both for Jesus and for us, and this is why he bids us come. We find in him rest from death. We wear a watch, we keep a calendar, because we know that we have limited amounts of time. That bucket list you've compiled, a list of things that need to be done, it's a sign that death may be near and cannot be put off, except by Jesus. Jesus offers you a life which is no longer counted in years or lived in fear. 
He gives the, you the eternal outcome of your life in heaven so that you might be free to live under his graceful watch today. Let me tell you another secret. We think sleep is rest, but one wise man has said that sleep is nothing more for the Christian than practice for death. And yet that restless sleep, the tossing and the turning in the middle of night, that's what sin has done. It has stolen even the rest that we should get from sleep. What should be peaceful has been filled with nightmares and restlessness and anything but peace at times. We find it hard to sleep because sin stole the joy from life and rest from sleep. But Jesus, our Lord, has come and conquered. And he has stolen our lives back. He took our sins so that we may return and find in him the joy that we long for. He rested in the grave so that we might not fear death anymore. Come to me, bids Jesus. He is here to give us not a shortcut or a life tip, but to give us himself. To give us himself hidden in the voice of his word, planted in baptismal water and tasted and the bread and wine at his table. And when he bids us come to him, he is inviting us to his house, to the place where the voice of men might be silenced so that the voice of the Son of Man might be heard clearly, where water drowns the sinner, to raise him or her up to a life stronger than death, and where the food we want is replaced with food that satisfies all our wants, all our desires, and all our needs. Christ has come not to give you an easier life. He has come to give you himself. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You want to know what forgiveness looks like? It looks like Jesus. You want to know what joy looks like? It looks like Jesus. You want to know what rest looks like? It looks like the open and welcoming arms of your Savior bidding you every moment of every day, no matter where you are or what you're going through in this dark and dreary world, to hear his inviting voice, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So come to him, to the Lord who has given his all for you, and he will create in you a new and clean heart. He will restore to you the joy of your salvation. And he will build you up into a life that death cannot touch. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He has already done the heavy lifting. So come to me, says Jesus. Come and find rest. Amen. The peace of God that comes with our Savior who dispenses to us greatly and graciously guard your hearts and minds in Christ until that joyous eternal day. God has made us his own people by our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our sins with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism 
for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Merciful Lord, hear the prayers of your people and grant to us grace sufficient for our need and all those for whom we pray. O Lord, our King, as once your people received you in joy, open our hearts to rejoice in your coming so that we may meet you in your word and sacrament for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. Help us to bless and extol your name before the nations and declare your salvation to the generations to come, proclaiming that you are merciful and gracious and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all your creation. Continue to bless your church and to provide for her faithful pastors who will preach and teach your word and church workers who will serve us in your name. Gracious Father, as you led your holy apostles to ordain ministers for the proclamation of your word and the faithful administration of the sacraments of Christ, grant to this congregation the guidance of your Holy Spirit to choose a suitable pastor according to your will for the blessing of your church in this place. Wise and giving Lord, you are the God of truth, and in you no falsehood or deception exists. Help us to delight in your law, to love what is good and true and right, and to seek these things. Help us to wage war against the old Adam in us, and to restore us when we stray from your word. Forgive us when we give in to Satan's temptations. Compassionate Lord, we do not suffer alone the pain and afflictions of this life, but we live them out within your grace and sustained by your mercy. Hear us on behalf of the sick, those who suffer, the grieving, and those to whom death is near. According to your will, deliver them from their afflictions and give to all your strength, patience, and hope that they may endure to eternal life. Show compassion and drive out all pestilence from our land. Loving Father, you have hidden your greatness from our wisdom and made your ways known to children. Guide us to bring our children to the waters of baptism, to raise them up in the fear and admission, admonition of the Lord, and to know perfect rest and peace within your loving arms. Gentle God and Lord, you have invited us to come to you with the heavy burdens of this life, that we may find rest and peace in your mercy. Grant relief to those who struggle, supply to those in need, hope to those in fear, and peace to those who are anxious, that we may be delivered from all adversity and brought to everlasting life, where we shall join the saints of old in your presence forevermore. Gracious Father, as we come to the table your Son has set, give us faith and repentance, so that we may receive with joy and thanksgiving his flesh in this bread and his blood in this cup. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that what we have received with our lips we may keep in holiness of life. All these things, blessed Lord, we pray you to grant us according to your merciful goodness and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You, <clears throat> as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you bid us, bid us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, and your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. this true body and blood of our Lord strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand. In the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood, keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Jesus' name.